project. There's a few reasons why I felt that film had to be made. Um, and for me, like every project I do is like an amalgamation of the things I'm into, people I know, experiences I'm dealing with, or, you know, and with that project, you know, I was always interested in geopolitics. Um, I was always interested in Cold War stuff. And I was actually, my parents, I remember my parents telling me about the 70s and telling me about some, oh, there's a truck passing. Yeah, pause one second, let it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I remember my parents telling me about the 1970s because they had left Kingston in, I guess, 1970. I'd moved to Negril to get away. And, you know, the country went into serious turmoil, especially following Michael Manley's um, election in 1972, towards the middle, not really at the beginning, because Manley is probably the most loved prime minister Jamaica ever had, a great, was a great statesman. But, mm -hmm. you know, he was close to Fidel Castro, naturally, we're literally 90 miles away, mm -hmm. um, but too close for the comfort of the United States, especially in the context of the Cold War. So, and, and they were, you know, we were building alongside Cuba, like we had, you know, a lot of exchange programs, etc. And by the middle of the 70s, it was, you know, intolerable. And um, the U.S. pretty much launched through the CIA, you know, a full-on destabilization of the country to, mm -hmm. to make sure it didn't go the way of communism or whatever, to, to, to bring it back. Socialism. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is when the murder rates, you know, quadrupled year over year. Political, it was, you know, it's a, it was an undeclared civil war between neighborhoods and gangs aligned to different political parties. You know, one, one side was aligned to one party and they were armed and trained by the CIA. The other side was aligned to the People's National Party. Um, and there was counterinsurgency operations supported by the Cubans. So there was a proxy war playing off in Jamaica. Um, and, you know, I never learned about this in high school. Why didn't I learn about this? Why did I have to go looking about CIA intervention in other countries to then re-circle back? To stumble upon your own, yeah. your own, your history. own history. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I could tell you about some old English wars that we were told about in history <laughs> class. I don't know about this period as yes. a most significant post-colonial moment um, that has had the biggest impact on our development. So that was one. Boom. Not only does the world need to know about it, but like we need to know about it. We need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm also interested in that type of filmmaking. Like I'm interested in geopolitics. I'm, I, the film, in a way, I approach it kind of like a Western aesthetically because I thought mm -hmm. of these opposing neighborhoods as like Western towns and yes. all the Westerns I would have watched growing up. Even the, song, the score has a very Western energy to it. Um, and I basically based it on a story of these guys who ended up getting killed for the most part at the Green Bay Massacre. They didn't all get killed, but I kind of took that story and worked it backwards to what type of a youth was maybe a, a, a gang leader in a neighborhood and what mm. headspace was he in. And I also didn't want to tell a story about crime and action for entertainment. It was a story about, let's put into context where right. the crime issue in Jamaica comes from. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the gang culture the crime culture, it all comes from political tribalism. 